10 days ago, I released video on the SM Lite SLZB06 series of the Ethernet coordinators for the ZigBee network. Also, about a month, month and a half ago, I released video on the UZG01, another Ethernet ZigBee coordinator. Well, today we'll be looking at how you can have more than one instance of ZigBee to MQTT inside your Home Assistant, no matter if you're using Home Assistant OS, HAOS, or if you're using Docker installation. We'll start in a couple of seconds. If you are planning to use both ZHA and ZigBee to MQTT, that shouldn't be the issue. You can have two coordinators sticks, hook them up to your system, then pair one USB stick with ZHA and then the other one with the ZigBee to MQTT, and you should be good to go. But for example, what if you have one stick that is covering your upper floor and also you want to add two additional Ethernet connected coordinators to your network, plus you have a remote location and for example you have a barn or something else. That's four coordinators extra that you need to add. Well, that one is not that easy, at least not out of box. So today we will be looking at how you can install multiple instances of ZigBee to MQTT. If you would for example go to add-on store, you see that you only have one instance of ZigBee to MQTT. Sure, you can install the Edge version, then run ZigBee to MQTT and Edge in parallel, but what if you want to run stable instances of Home Assistant? Yes, you can have multiple stable instances. I was able to install in parallel six ZigBee to MQTTs. If you are running Home Assistant OS, that is a bit easier, but you are also limited on how many instances you can run. If, on the other hand, you are running Docker, you can have as many instances or as many Docker containers as you want. But we will be looking at Docker a little bit later down the road. First, let's start with the Home Assistant OS. So, how do you get multiple instances of ZigBee to MQTT inside your Home Assistant? It is easy, but also not so easy. If you go to Settings, click on Add-ons, click on Add-on Store. If you have already installed ZigBee to MQTT, you will see only one listing. ZigBee to MQTT, Edge and Proxy, and this one is already installed and running. There is no way for you to install additional instance, at least not this way. What you have to do is very simple. Let's go back, let's click on three dots, repositories, and we need to add multiple ZigBee to MQTT repositories. If we would copy this link, click on Add and click Add, nothing would happen because we already have that repository. So let's check this neat trick. If after the URL we need trailing slash, click on add, we have additional instance. Then we repeat and add two trailing slashes, click add, we have third instance. Then we can also copy this link, remove s from https and leave it as http, click on add, and we can add two additional instances by doing the same thing, removing the S, first adding slash at the end, and then once again removing S and adding two slashes at the end. Let's press close and let's clear the cache and refresh the screen. We now have option to install six instances. One is already installed and the other ones are still not installed. Since the Home Assistant is handling all the Docker installations in the background, yes, those are all the Docker containers, we also do not have a problem with the naming here, which is something that we have to be careful in the Docker installation. So, for example, if I want to add additional instance, I would click on this one, click on Install, I would need to go to Configuration Settings and set up MQTT and the Serial Connection. Before we go any further, let's first check the original ZigBee to MQTT configuration. So, here it is. Data config path is OK, we have socket configuration, we have MQTT configuration, and we have serial port configuration. This serial configuration can be either serial port or the Ethernet port. In this case, this is TTY USB, meaning that this is device that is attached to the USB port. Then we have one additional configuration, and that is this one here, port 8485. In order for us to get the next ZigBee to MQTT instance working, we need to make a couple of changes. This is SLZB06 
P7. We have specified MQTT, but you must not use the same topic. If you are using same topic across multiple instances or multiple coordinators, you will have issues. Trust me, I know it because I failed myself. Everything will work okay, everything will look okay, and then simply at some point it will stop working. All your devices will become unavailable, although Zigbee to MQTT will show that all devices are online. That's the issue if you are using same topic. What I did here, I've just added number 2, so that I know that this is the second Zigbee to MQTT instance. We have the base topic plus added 2 at the end. Then I've specified the serial port, in this case we are using TCP, this is as I mentioned SLZB06P7 device. And one additional thing I had to do, I had to increase or change the number. In out of box installation, this one is 8485 and I've just increased it by 1 to 8486. If I add additional instance, third instance of Zigbee to MQTT, this part is the same, MQTT is almost the same, but I've added number 3 to the end of this base topic, I've changed the port, this one is SLZB06M device, and once again I increased the number, it's now 8487. If I go to second instance in the information, click on show in sidebar, and start it, we already see two instances, one is working, this is the USB connection, this one is still starting up. And in the log files we can see that this second instance has also started. We can go to third one, go to information, show in sidebar, click start, and also a couple of seconds later it should start and we will be able to access this third instance. Unfortunately, so far I was unable to find a way how to distinguish or rename those instances. They all show as Zigbee to MQTT. First instance, the second instance, and the third instance. The only way for you to be able to distinguish the instances you have is if you check the URL. This one starts with the 4, this starts with 9, and this starts with the 1. That means that each instance is running in a separate container. Remember that if you add multiple Zigbee to MQTT instances, you have to change the base topic and you also have to change the port. Those two must be different. If you fail to change the port, the system will not start. If you fail to change the base topic, the system will start, everything will look okay, but at some point everything will stop. Zigbee to MQTT will be working, but MQTT server or connection between MQTT and Home Assistant will simply at one point break. In your add-on list you will see all three instances that are running. If you have six instances you will see all the instances that are installed, running or not running. If you want to remove instance and also remove the repository you will first have to stop it. If I would for example now go to add-on store, click on three dots, you may see that I can install three instances but three instances I cannot because they are still used and they are still installed. Click on remove, remove, and remove to remove all the paths to the instances that you will not be installing and using. But of course some of you are using plain docker. What in this case? It's actually very simple, it's very similar to Home Assistant OS, but instead of doing things via the UI you will have to do things manually. For example, I have here one instance of Zigbee to MQTT, we can check that this is not the Home Assistant OS. We do not have add-ons here. What you have to do is you have to configure it via the PuTTY. So let's open up PuTTY and we haven't done that in a long, long, long time. Inside PuTTY or whatever terminal you are using for your Home Assistant Docker, go to the folder where you have rest of your Docker containers. Let's see what we have here. Here I have two containers, Home Assistant and Zigbee to MQTT. What you need to do is you need to create a new folder, mkdir, for make directory, we will call this zigbee to mqtt2, z2m2 or r2d2. Let's go into that folder, cd, change directory, z2m2. It's currently empty and we will be using wget command to get this command from the github repository. This is probably the same step that you did for the first installation. Run the command. And now we should have data folder and inside data folder we should have configuration YAML file. You now need to adapt it to your configuration. Let's open it. I will be using v configuration.yaml and now you have to customize this file. 
first things first, let's change this to false. We don't want the system to always wait for new devices. Then we have to specify the MQTT server. This should be the same MQTT server that you are already using. 192, 168, 135, 1883 is the port. If you are using username and password, you need to type them here. I am using, so let me quickly type them in. Now we have to customize the serial port. If you already have your Zigbee to MQTT, usually this is a USB stick. Now we have to add the external device, coordinator. This can be any Ethernet coordinator that supports this type of connection. So let me quickly type that in here. PCP, then the IP address, 192.168.1.148, with port 6638. Of course, adapt this to your own settings. Baud rate, 115200, zero, adapter, EZSP, and I will add also a couple more settings. Advanced, transmit power, 20, to utilize the maximum potential power of this adapter. Pen ID, generate, to create new pen ID. And also I want to enable front end. Front end, true. This should be it, what you have to customize here. But before we end up, we also must not forget to change the base topic. We already have Zigbee 2MQTT that is used by the original Zigbee 2MQTT instance. For example, here I will be using Zigbee 2MQTT number 6. Let's save the settings, press escape, column, WQ, exclamation mark, and this should be it. Now we have prepared the configuration email file. If you want to check it out, you can open it once again, look inside the configuration. We have new Zigbee topic. We have the IP address of the MQTT server, username and password if you are using them. Then we have the serial configuration, port is TCP, the IP address and the port, baud rate, adapter. I've added transmit power. Also, I will be creating a new pen ID and the front end is enabled. It's not necessary to enable front end, but it will be much easier for you to configure and run everything if the front end is configured. Let's once again exit, press on column. Q for quit, exclamation mark, and press enter. We now have prepared everything, but our Zigbee to MQTT still hasn't been downloaded, the Docker container, and it also hasn't started. Now make sure that you go one level up inside your directory structure. If we check the path, we are in the original volume one Docker Zigbee to MQTT 2 folder. That means that there is internal subfolder data, and inside that folder we have configuration YAML file. The command we will be using is different than the original command you have used when you have first time started your Zigbee to MQTT. Because this time we will not be using USB port, instead we will be using the port that we specified inside the configuration YAML file. If on the other hand you want to use two USB sticks, you can do the same thing, but you will also need to specify here the device TTY USB or whatever port you are using for that second stick. But since I'm using the Ethernet connection, the command will look like this, sudo docker run. This will download and run the container. Name of the container will be zigbee2mqtt3 because I already have zigbee2mqtt1 and 2 here. Restart is equal unless stop. That means that the system will automatically restart zigbee2mqtt if it crashes, unless, of course, I press or hit the stop button inside Synology because this is running on Synology. Then I've specified the port. Since for me port 8080 and 8081 are already taken, I'm here using port 8082 and it is mapped to the internal port 8080. Then we have this, that means that it will use the data folder and the configuration YAML file inside of it, mapped to the internal data folder, time zone and the name of the image I want to download. Hit enter and the system should automatically start to download the image from the internet and after it downloads, it will install another instance of zigbee2mqtt. Since I already am running the latest zigbee2mqtt, it hasn't downloaded anything, it just started new instance. And this is it, it started. Give it a couple of seconds to finish loading everything up, and now we can go back to our Home Assistant. Inside Home Assistant, if you want to add this zigbee2mqtt, do as you did previously. Go to System, Dashboards, click on Add Dashboard, web page and type in the http 192.168.1.200 with the port 8082. Click next. 
it's much easier here to give different name. I will call it ZigBee to MQTT dash two. Click create. And now we have new instance of ZigBee to MQTT available in the dashboard. This is the original instance and this is the second instance. You can click permit join and new devices will be able to join the network. If you need additional instances, you can repeat the process. Create new folder, download the configuration file, customize the configuration file, download once again image or just load up new image with new settings. Change the name of the container, change the topic in the configuration YAML file, change the port where you want to point this zigbee 2 mqt instance to, and of course, change the port of the web server. That's it. You can have as many instances of zigbee 2 mqt as you need. For example, if you live in a house with three floors, you can have three coordinators on each of the floors. Then if you have a garage or barn, you can have additional coordinators there. And for example, you have your summer house. And yes, you can also connect your summer house via the VPN connection. That's it. And for all of you that are skeptical, if I go to Docker Manager inside Synology, click on containers, you can see that I have Home Assistant here and also two instances of ZigBee to MQTT and both of them are running. No matter if you're using SLZB06 series of the coordinators or Zigstar UZG1, or you can mix and match both, this is how you can add multiple instances of ZigBee to MQTT to your home assistant, no matter if you're using OS or the Docker version. If you are wondering how you can do that with ZHA, currently I don't know of a way to have multiple ZHA instances. I don't believe that this is possible, and I'm also not sure that devs will be working on a way on how you can have multiple ZHAs. I really do hope that you did find this video useful. And if you did find this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button. And also, while you are already there, check that you are subscribed. If not, click on subscribe button because there will be some awesome videos upcoming in next couple of weeks. And before I end up the video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me a super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.